Parietal loop examination can be tricky, especially when you need to, to examine the dominant or non-dominant parietal loop. Here is a suggested structured simplified approach. As we can see, I divided the, the parietal loop into three categories. First one will be talking about common items that both parietal loops uh, right and left share and then techniques to examine the dominant. If we talk about a patient provided the patient is right-handed, so his left side parietal loop will be the dominant hemisphere. And then we talk about what examination and techniques for the right dominant parietal loop. Let's dive in. So in the common items, I'm talking about general items, cortical sensory functions, and a visual field defect. In the general items, as we agreed in the previous videos, we talk about name and age, right or left-handed, it's really important to hear, and your attention to person and place and time. And we don't forget to look for any skin stigmata or scars from a surgical operation. Moving to the next item, which is the cortical sensory functions, either parietal loop, if you examine either parietal loop, first of all, you ask the patient to close his eyes and draw a number in his hand, for example, eight, and ask him if he can recognize the number, and that called graphthesia. And also talking about tactile discrimination, we, while the patient is closing his eyes, point where I touch you, and then also touch two points at the same time, separately, and see if he can able to mention that he's two point is touched. That called tactile localization and two point discrimination. And third is touching different parts of the body, right and left, sometimes different parts, sometimes is the same parts, and see if he able to recognize where he touched while he's closing his eyes as well. And this is we looking for sensory neglect. In the visual field, we using confrontation methods in the examination. If there is a a fiction of the parietal loop, we will have a contralateral inferior quadrinopia, and it's called sometimes pizza in the floor, which is when a part of the optic radiation in the parietal loop is affected, number five, and that at that time we say this is can cause contralateral inferior quadrinopia. So we'll finish the general items, we now going to the diving in the dominant parietal loop. In the dominant parietal loop, uh, there's a four items we have to discuss. The first one, which is the hallmark of parietal loop examination, dominant parietal loop examination, is Grisman syndrome. Grisman syndrome is a name of the, the one who discovered that. It's one of the professors in, from the 80s. And Grisman syndrome has four criteria. First one is agraphia, so we ask the patient to write his hand, write his name, inability to write called agraphia. And then we ask him, give him one number, and ask him to calculate minus seven, starting 100, and then take away seven each time and see if he able to calculate that. And that called acalculia, if he is unable to do that calculation. And then I'll show him my hands and ask him, do you know what, which is this is the thumb? What is the little fingers? And he, if he in ability to separate between fingers, that's called finger agnosia. And the last thing is crossing my hands and ask him, which is my right hand? Which one is my left hand? And if he enabled that called left-right disorientation. And these are the four main components of Grisman syndrome. Moving next, in the, we're still in the dominant hemisphere, we talk about Alexia, which is inability to read. So you can ask him to read your name tags, for example, and then audio apraxia, where we ask him for daily uh, activities that he need a serial of motor functions to do. For example, show me when you want to drink a tea, and he should use the, his hand like a drinking a tea. This is audio apraxia in dominant parietal loop examination. Moving to last one, which is synonyms is mean ability to identify the objects while he's closing his eyes. We put a pin in his hand and ask him what is exactly if he's able to identify this object. Some uh, books for neuro examination consider stereo as one of the common 
sensory functions in both parietal loops and other books consider it as a dom dominant parietal loop. So we talk about the dominant left loop. So we talk about Gisman syndrome, alexia, audio apraxia, and historiognosis. Moving now to non-dominant parietal loop. What we need really to know in the non-dominant parietal loop? Again, four things. First one, we're talking about spatial awareness, so ability to draw a clock showing, for example, 15 past 8. He need to draw that by his hand. Next is construction apraxia, and I test that by asking him to draw five points to the star. So construction apraxia, I will ask him by asking him to draw five point star. And the third part is dressing apraxia. I'll ask him how to button your shirt, and he will show me how he button his shirt. And then geographical dyspraxia, where he able to identify locations and directions. So I'll ask him where is London located, for example, and he should should be it's the south of UK. That is the geographical dyspraxia. So we talk about general items that share both parietal spheres and also talking about dominant and non-dominant. So the key summarize of that. Dominant left parietal loop, if we consider the patient is right-handed, in most of the cases, we're talking about the main hallmark is the Grisman syndrome and its language-related functions, reading, writing, and calculations. On the left or non-dominant parietal loop, we talk about visual spatial and attention functions. So we talk about geographical dyspraxia, construction apraxia, and dressing apraxia. We have to know that both hemispheres have a common sensory functions. And remember that the exact presentation based on individual hand handness, also location of the lesion, and also individual anatomical differences. So it's not like it's, this is a suggested approach. You can find the difference between different books and also in the examination in reality. Thank you.